Hi, I'm Susan, an adult services librarian at the Virginia Beach Public Library, and this video is part of our Camp Evergreen series, which is about making cool things, earning badges, and discovering new skills. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this painting, which is inspired by the works of Alma Thomas. I learned about Alma Thomas recently when I heard that the Chrysler Museum of Art was hosting a special exhibit of her works from July 9th through October 3rd, 2021. You can learn more about the exhibit on their website, which is linked in the comments below. Alma Woodsy Thomas was born in Columbus, Georgia in 1891. In 1907, her family moved to Washington, D.C., which is where she would live for the rest of her life. Throughout her life, Alma would study and learn about art at several schools and institutions, as well as through various experiences studying under other artists. She is most well known for her color field paintings that were inspired by nature, space, and music. Color field painting is an abstract style that emerged in the 1940s to 1960s. Artists would pour, stain, spray, or paint onto a canvas to create highly pigmented fields of colors. Alma created paintings primarily in acrylic, which is what we will be doing today. So for my inspiration, I pulled from nature, similar to how Alma Thomas did, and selected the tulip fields in Holland. I really like that the fields were planted in rows, but also could alternate. Um, and this section here especially reminded me of the color field technique of painting or color field design. So based on my inspiration of the tulip fields, I did a sample sketch just with some markers. More to give me an idea than again to create an actual guide for the painting. And for this project, you will need a canvas or a canvas wrap board, which is what this is. A paintbrush. I am going to be using this brush because I wanted to get the more block like design on my painting. And with this flatter edge, it's going to give me good lines and they aren't going to end up looking too blobby. So now that I have my workspace assembled, I have my canvas, my paints, my brush, my water something to wipe the brush off on, mostly to make sure that I'm getting all the excess water off. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually turn my canvas. Even though I want this to be a horizontal painting, it's a lot easier for me to paint from right to left than to do some vertical painting. So I like to try and paint the paint onto the brush. So now that I've picked up a little bit of paint, I'm just going to start in the top corner here and paint a small block. And whenever the paint starts to feel scratchy on the canvas, I'm going to flip my brush over. some more paint. This is more just to get the blocks placed. Rinse and dry the brush. Pick up the 
next color. And one tip for painting in this style is to vary the length of your brush strokes. So you can see my red ones were shorter, my orange ones are gonna be longer. Something I always try to remember when I'm painting, especially when I'm painting nature, is that nothing in nature is ever perfect. Likely you'll need to go over each of these rows a couple times. Each type of paint has an opacity to it. which means how transparent it ends up looking. You can do things like add white and black to make paint more opaque. Alma Thomas was an African-American artist who lived from 1891 to 1978. She was the first person to earn a fine arts degree from Howard University in 1924. It was not until she retired from teaching in 1960 that she devoted herself fully to her art. She would experiment in various mediums as she studied art, even learning about puppetry and making marionettes. She worked in various mediums such as oil on canvas, acrylic on canvas, and watercolor on paper, often in a mosaic-like style using vibrant colors and loose brush strokes. In 1963, she participated in the March on Washington, which inspired her work also titled March on Washington. Though she faced many barriers as an African-American woman, she felt that creativity was independent of race or gender. In 1965, she suffered crippling arthritis in her hands, making it difficult for her to paint for long periods of time, and she almost quit painting. Howard University approached her in 1966 about doing a retrospective of her work, and she was determined to create some new works for the show, drawing on inspiration from right outside her window. In 1969, she began work on her space series of paintings, which was inspired by the Apollo missions, such as Apollo 10, which used the call signs of Charlie Brown and Snoopy for their command module and lunar module. In 1972, she became the first black woman honored with a one-woman show at the Whitney Museum of Art located in New York City. Before her death in 1978, she had become a nationally recognized female artist and her art now hangs in numerous museums and private collections. Alma Thomas would see the world change before her eyes throughout her life and her art remains a representation of the many changes that she saw. Allow a few minutes for it to dry and then decide if you would like to add a second coat. Repeat this until the paint is as opaque as you would like it to be. An optional step when finishing a painting is to apply a varnish to the work. Allow your painting to dry for 24 to 48 hours before applying a varnish. Mod Podge is a quick and easy way to finish a painting. After applying the first coat of Mod Podge, allow another 24 to 48 hours before applying any additional coats. For additional methods of varnishing, we recommend visiting your local art store for suggestions and tips. 
We hope you've enjoyed painting along with us and learning about Alma Thomas in this video. Tag us on social media and show us what you made. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content from VBPL to keep your mind evergreen. Thanks for watching.